everyone. I'm Donna Bush with your CID TV News Brief on this Friday. The government administration building was abuzz with a Dress for Culture Day activities on Friday. Students from various government primary schools entertained staff and visitors to the building. I think students, you are showing us up because a lot of us here don't have it down packed like that. So you probably have to come back and teach us how to do that. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you all so much, teachers. We're most grateful that you're able to take time to teach them and to bring them here with us today to celebrate the Cayman culture. A net-making demonstration was held, as well as Caymanian-made items were for sale from the National Museum. Dress for Culture Day is an opportunity to celebrate the rich cultural melting pot that is Cayman. The day of fundraising for the National Cultural Foundation honors the fact that over 100 nationalities and different cultures live harmoniously in the Cayman Islands. This year's theme includes majesty, as Her Majesty's Platinum Jubilee is celebrated in the Cayman Islands. As part of Jubilee celebrations earlier this week, Caymanian proud memories of Her Majesty gave many prominent Caymanians the opportunity to share their experiences of Her Majesty's visit back in 1983 and 1994. So I really commend the effort of the ministry, which thank the, the minister who is absent today, the Honorable um, Bernie Bush, as well as acting minister, Honorable Isaac Rankin, and Chief Officer Teresa Echenique and their phenomenal team for jumping on this uh, to, to take it in a whole nother direction and to, to, to draw out the reflections and the memories of some of our fine Caymanians here this morning because this is very important and it's a moment in history that will never ever happen again. Some of the many questions asked during the event included what might have prompted the Queen to visit the Cayman Islands not once, but twice just over a decade. What are some of the most engaging conversations ordinary Caymanians had with the monarch? And what are the public's lasting impressions about the head of the Commonwealth following her visits? Those questions and more were answered during the Caymanian Proud event. I got to meet the Queen and of course it was a buzz of um, activity because um, the Sir John A. Cumber Primary School Steel Band um, actually was playing some renditions for her, um, for the Queen. And then also the students from um, John A. Cumber and Wesleyan Church or school was, was there in the audience. They took up like one whole bleacher because they were gonna sing the national song and national anthem. And so both my daughters were um, taking part in those activities. So it was really good. Um, I took lots of photographs with the Queen and um, she was led by our Honorable Speaker, um, Mr. McKeever Bush. And, you know, he was introducing him to, um, introducing her to some of the elderly people. They were all in a line out on the, um, uh, at the Bush Field. Now, the Ministry of Youth, Sports, Culture, and Heritage has hosted two Platinum Jubilee Caymanian Proud events. If you missed the live stream here on CIG Television, you can watch it on demand on the Cayman Islands government's YouTube channel, as well as your local cable channel. Well, the Cayman Islands Health Services Authority's 10th Annual Women's Health Conference started on Friday morning. Each year, the conference coincides with International Women's Day, a day celebrating the social, social economic, cultural, and political achievements of women worldwide. The event involves a list of experts and healthcare leaders who gather to address the topical issues and clinical updates as it relates to care for women across the rapidly changing global healthcare landscape, with emphasis on evidence-based approach to providing seamless preventative and curative care. Now, this year's conference theme is Head to Toe, Impact of Women's Reproductive Health. We invite you to join us on Monday when we bring you highlights of the Women's Healthcare Conference. Again, you can watch it on the Cayman Islands government's YouTube channel on demand. Turning to the Friday forecast, tonight we can expect probably cloudy skies with a 20% chance of showers. For boaters out there, seas will be slight with wave heights of 1 to 3 feet. The outlook is for similar weather through Sunday or Saturday night, rather, as a cold front is expected to enter the Northwest Caribbean on Saturday and move near the Cayman Islands by Sunday morning before weakening. An increase in showers is likely from early Sunday morning. The synopsis calls for light to moderate southeasterly winds and seas, which are expected across the Cayman area as a high-pressure system drifts 
over the central Atlantic Ocean. A reminder that you can find the latest on expected local weather conditions online at weather.gov.ky. And that ends today's news brief here on CIG Television. I'm Donna Bush, as always, thanking you for joining us, wishing you a safe and, of course, a wonderful weekend, and inviting you back here again on Monday. Until then, bye-bye for now.